paper magic will survive like the heat death of the universe and will... <laughs> oh, it's a smuggler's copter. Would you like to crew this? And then it crashes because they don't understand arithmetic. All your cards belong to me. Two minutes into Mason him in the eyeballs, I switched to pepper spray. He's like, yeah, it's downright refreshing. And went back to the race. Magic is dying. I'm done. He's selling everything. <laughs> I might be a hoarder. And yes. I don't have the crayons or glue to explain this to you right now. <laughs> Were you going to die twice? Oil Just... would be worthless before magic cards would. Well, okay, Dr. Man. That's Mr. <laughs> Dr. Professor Jason. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to another very Got special him. episode of Brainstorm Brewery. I am your host, Cass Lynn, joined by my co-host, Corbin <laughs> Hostler, DJ Dougie Johnson, and Jason uh, took too big a rip off the Benjamin all. I just made fun of DJ for for being 1,700 millimeters, which is taller than he actually is. <laughs> That's a good... Uh, uh, measurement conversion joke you know for those at home who like that um today what is this it's it's may 13th as we're recording this y'all are going to hear this on like may 15th uh, if you're on our patreon for as little as 20 cents an episode mm. uh, or on uh the 17th if you're just a plebeian or if you're uh, 1700 millimeters yeah today is the day the day that watsy undid stickers and uh, attractions, the thing that I never learned how they worked. Vindicated after all this time. Opponents played them against me. I just said, yeah, sure, man. That's good. Can I see the Didn't floaties? Matter. Can I see the yes, floaties in my beer? We can. I'm going to drink that. I'm, gonna, I'm still going to drink it. Right? Yes. God put that in the bottle. That's what happened. Yeah. God this barley wine there. is older than DJ. Mm. Well, welcome uh, into the show, everybody. Cass is right. There is a lot to talk shit, about. That's good. Uh, that is Especially not Jason's, Jason's um, experience that he's having right now. Uh, I'm, a lot I'm, has I'm been sorry. going on. You should I, be. I wanted to celebrate with a, an aged barley wine. Oh, you should. And, and you should be sorry. Feel bad. It's, it's a very special out. episode. Yeah. There you go. And we're all here, which always makes it special. So I've had uh, multiple people subtweet me for talking about my beer on the podcast. And like, you know who you are and go f*** yourself. Mm, we're starting off hot. I see. Why do you want them to do that, Jason? Um, because they... that's what you say when you don't appreciate how someone treats you. You say, go <laughs> yourself. Okay, great. Thanks for that. Even though you should say, go don't have sex. I heard some people get upset with me for not knowing that the um, sound on the podcast of somebody going, Ch, was just actually somebody going, Ch. I don't. Uh, some people got upset with me, too. So I understand where you're coming from. Proxy no guy says he doesn't listen to perfect. the Proxy Gay said he doesn't listen to the podcast anymore because of the ch- sound effect. We have a version that doesn't have it, I think. Well, send it to him. <laughs> the clean audio version. <laughs> the clean audio. Yeah, that's right. Uh, well, the G-rated let's, version. L- let's go back to sticker discourse. How about that? Because that's what happened in Magic. There was a ban and restricted update. Uh, there was a banning in Popper. And let's not forget about that. Do you remember what was banned? John Anyone? Popper? No one the knows. guy from Blues Traveler? Please, yeah. John Popper was my father. You can just call me Popper. <laughs> uh, well, they banned all the glitters in that format. So, hey, do you know John to Popper that actually didn't lose weight, Cass? Everyone thought he lost weight, but it turns out whenever anybody would take his picture, he would suck it in, suck it in, suck it in. The, the is, no, no, no. Clearly... A uh, too highbrow joke for all of us. It's no, I got look. it. I one hundred percent. I got it. Joke. It's very funny. I hated it, but I, I got it. I would like to. I would like to comment about Jason's jokes. Someone in our Discord pointed out that Jason made a Demolition Man joke, which I got. I just didn't laugh. I want the record to state that it wasn't. That it wasn't funny. It just that it wasn't like it wasn't laugh too smart funny. for the. I mean, right. Demolition so, Man's not a good movie. So like, for it's instance, a fun movie turns out an aggressive nose exhale doesn't come up on the mic. Like, yeah, like when Jason. Yeah. So so when Jason said "suck it in, suck it in, suck it in," in my head, I no one knows what the words to the song are, but in my head, I immediately went because that's how the song goes. Like, so no, I got it. I just hated it. Suck it in, suck it in, suck it in. Whether you're Rin Tin Tin or Anne Boleyn, make a desperate move or else you'll win and then begin to see what you do to me. This MTV is not f- for free. It's OPC. It's killing me so desperately. I sing to you of love, but 
Sure, but also rage and hate and pain and fear self. I can't keep these feelings on the shelf. I tried. Well, no, in fact, I lied. It would be financial suicide, but I got too much pride inside to hide or slide, I think. I'll do what I decide. Some of the lyrics of all time, too. And then I'll ride. Yeah, first oh, yeah, it's a shitty song, but I like memorized it when I, I was like I've 10. heard that song a million times, and not once have I ever heard the words that you just said. Well, that's the... Like, it just goes, Rantin, mer, mer, mer. Like, <laughs> it's all it does. <laughs> I you hate know, that. Oh, I hate Blues Traveler, man. What is wrong? I know with you? I do too. References, dude. Come on. I do too, but it was funny to say "popper." Can you? It, I guess the hook brought you back, Jason. It did. I, I got on this I, hate, I got hooked I on that song. That song sucks, but like I didn't know that when I was ten. That's the whole point. You ever, Literally, you it's a song about sucking cassette tapes. Songs. No, I just bought blank cassette tapes, but I, I knew the process of it. That tracks we, for we you. Can... That was that was your precursor to buying another Ristic study because you couldn't find one. That's true. So what you would do is the only way that a, uh, a tape player knew if it was a recordable tape or a non-recordable tape was there's this little thing in the corner of the VHS tape. And if a metal peg could go in that, then it was like, oh, this is not a recordable. So you would just jam that with paper so the thing wouldn't See, go in there. And then you could... Or, Co- like erase and re-record on VHS tapes or no cassette cassettes. <laughs> so there was a band and restricted announcement today, and obviously we talked about the popper band. We mentioned it at least stickers and all that got banned. And you know I think it's so smart of Watsy to not touch Modern Legacy any further than that. I'm really excited for Modern Horizons three. All these new cards that can have taken from my hand with the grief, and then the other one taken from my hand with the grief when they reanimated or you know uh, mm-hmm. not dead after all. I think it's so cool they're letting us have our new cards also discarded by grief in a way that we can't interact with. I think that's just like so heads up of them. Yeah, they should definitely uh, allow us something to grieve. And it's the existence of grief in the format. Good. I remain on my actually fine. I remain grief on my is good, of liking. Grief is good. It is good for That's what format. Gordon Gecko said in that I'm movie. sure it's fine. Also, Corbin, that's the dumbest thing you've ever fucking said in your life. Nope. It's not. Have you that played Legacy in the last six months? I'm not talking about Legacy, I'm talking about Modern. Yeah, Modern is different. No one cares about Modern. Modern Horizons 3 is a separate <laughs> hey, Legacy. Hey, Come on, some people though. are I minors. cannot possibly begin to engage with you on Legacy. Uh, modern, I can talk about. <laughs> in Modern, it's probably fine. The actual difference is not that After All is a much worse card than Reanimate. There's there's a lot of differences, I would say. Yeah, yeah but like in Modern, there are necessary evil to keep the linear combo decks yeah. from just being linear combo decks. In Legacy, where you already had ways to keep that from happening, I yes, a completely different story, and everyone is very upset about it. Because so, it turns out that all the sort of high-variance Legacy decks can become a lot less high-variance by just playing Grief. Hey, Corbin, I got confused by your show on YouTube, Mining Modern. I thought it was called Modding Miners, so I got arrested for giving a bunch of illegal tattoos and implants to girls in high school. <laughs> that was a monkey d luffy level stretch of a joke but <laughs> did you like that i'm not gonna give you guys good jokes I, you don't nobody like no nobody I'm liked giving, that doc gif like come on man i'm giving jason clemency on this because of what dj said don't don't bring that down to our show you're all monkey d luffy cool. Yeah, man, I've never even seen Bleach. I'm not a nerd. This is a none piece zone. None piece zero pieces. Okay, let's. So the idea of side decks being gone in Legacy, um, one, you say people learn the difference between a side deck and a side board, as they are in fact. A side deck things. is what you play in Yu Gi Oh, Corbin. Mm. It's true. Also, I, I, I did like their their announcement was very um, had some interesting parts that people were memeing on. I particularly liked that there was a line that said there's no way to print cards to be legal for commander but not legal for vintage in an article announcing how these cards were legal for commander but not for vintage like but at this time, n- without doing no a thing they had to do the thing wizards is actually very adamant about the principle of if a card is printed it is playable in legacy vintage like that is that's what Matt you had. they want a format where anything printed is available to play. I think that they view that as an ethos, as a format, and as an important thing. 
And as a result, that's why you ended up with all these weird, like semi playable silver bordered cards that people wanted in black bordered. You get Infinity, where they try to mix the two with some terrible acorn stuff. Uh, and while it was cool to have some of those cards legal in Commander, the fact that we're now dealing with banning side decks and there's dozens of cards added to a ban list because of Mind Goblin is just really, really dumb. Mara I think really thought that we wanted more unbolts. Oh, no, Mara wanted more unbolts. He saved magic with Zendikar, so he gets he got at least he got at least four. But it was sets. like, like it was listen, like un we wanted did more. Very well. We wanted full art basics. When no. unglued, unglued and unhinged were the no. only two full art basics, we wanted more full art basics. Yeah, but yeah, unstable and then we was got also really successful. Unstable and unstable did great, which is why yes. you got more. We needed and not then he like flew boomers too close to the sun. Yes, here's yes, an unset. Exactly. It's a box of new shocklands that have different art. I and mean, yeah, they it, basically, it, they did exactly with unsets with Infinity or more or less, except what they did with unsets the first time, which is where it was cool the first time, and then you did it till it wasn't cool anymore. Like, they just do, do it with a lot just of Just do things. it like the clue sets. You get one fancy card in the box, and you get to play a board game one time. <laughs> it's too expensive for people to buy it just for the land, but the you're making a cool, fun though. thing without the, f***ing up Legacy yeah, until they The lands are my favorite stickers. part of Infinity, but that's also anyone all anyone cares about there are actually a couple of cool infinity cards that don't have side decks though for like legacy like i think comet seller pop comet. is a net positive for the format that card's sure. really fun paradise too yeah, paradise lost occasionally sees playing storm um clown cars seem playing like weird yeah. oriok salvagers decks well that's why clown it was cool players, yeah. that's why it was cool in theory when they did the acorn thing because we got unstable and we wanted some of these cards in black bordered Unfortunately, like the answer was not make an unset that's half this and half that. The answer was just make them in a commander set or somewhere else where you can do yeah. that. It turns out you could just make a product. What do you call those you cards, Corbin? Things. They're unplayables. Mm. Right, and I mean, the, if dice rolling is the bar to entry here, we just had the Fallout dice rolling deck. So, well, yeah, we I just had the D and D sets, right? And to yeah. be fair, if we're like, I, I almost guarantee you the paradigm between what we can print and what we can't print. Um, between now and say when uh, Unstable was concepted are, are just wildly different, right? Yeah. Like, there was a difference. There were, it was three CEOs ago I, is what happened, for me, right? A defining thing for this is so I, I recently added a card that says Venture Into the Dungeon into one of my mm -hmm. Australian Highlander decks. Do you know how many game objects you need for that? <laughs> let, me, let, me just, let me just grab this here. So we have What is a mobject? Game object? Yeah, what's a mobject? You're ruining the bit, man. That's pretty good. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> I need three different dungeons. I need like five different tokens. Like I need a one one skeleton in case I happen to go through the lost True. mine of fan diver. Or no, sorry, True. that's that's the tomb of annihilation, maybe. Who knows? And like I'm thinking about not adding the card. Nobody knows because everyone takes the same path through the dungeon every game. Except for that one time, Eli Cassis didn't and did really well at Pro Tour. Was he playing a Sararak? Because no, he was that's playing the the, the the arena, arena. buff version of Triumphant yes. Adventure that was a two one instead of a one one. Yeah, it was oh, busted. Attacks you venture. It was busted in that there was an yeah. arena event where all these um, rebalanced cards were legal, and it was a wild event. That's for sure. Was it, he weird. was going to like the Dungeon of the Mad Mage instead of the Lost Tomb of Fan Diver or something. And people were like, oh my god, he took a different dungeon. It's just a ridiculous thing to care about and care in competitive magic. And not even from right. like a, it's an idea It's a cool idea thing of, to freak out about it as a color commentator, though. Yeah, yeah, like, well, look, it's not that it's inherently bad. It's that it's logistically bad. And then it's as cumbersome. They called, and as they called out in the article, it got to the point where if you're playing a deck with any kind of copy effect... All of a sudden, now you got to carry your own side deck around with you in case you copy a mind goblin and have access to it or whatever the heck the stupid stuff is. Like, well, now that that Watsi has given Ultra Pro the magic symbols license and that to do their own knockoff uh, infinite tokens, maybe they'll just be like, "Oh, just buy these." There I were think. a couple of. I, I think if there's going to be a point where like. Every magic set has so many tokens that we're getting double sided tokens and normal booster packs. And like I yeah. I can't even imagine being somebody like Ben Blywis at SCG who has to on the day of opening be like, yeah. Okay guys, 
Let's find all the tokens so we can make sure we didn't sell things that don't exist or we have all the things that exist to sell. Here's the like blood that. tokens with a 1-1 one, one neonate on the back. Here right. are the blood tokens with a 3-3 right. three, three on the back. And some of them are foil. Some of them are not foil. Right. Some, some of them are foil different. on both sides. Some of them are only foil on one side. <laughs> I think all foil oh. should be foil on the back just so they don't curl. Am I wrong? We yeah. already made date sleeves. Give us, a, give us an offsetting foil layer on the back. Like in Forged in Fire, they're like, you have two different... But then you okay. can't play your cards unsleeved in a tournament. you got to use a Sanmai, at least. You already can't. I don't think you were allowed to do that legally. I think you are, but like it's it's rough. It it's depends on really the REL, one would imagine. I do every pre-release yeah. with like it, and it works out fine. Yeah. Like you, you could probably play an RCQ with your cards unsleeved as long as the cards were all near mint condition when you started, and you were very yeah. careful the entire event to not damage anything. Yeah. Wouldn't recommend it, but you could try. It wouldn't eat, yeah. Not, would Pretty not soon fly we're going to have to play with slabbed cards because there'd be too many counterfeits and too much damage. And then BCW's going to be like, yeah, I'll slab your deck for a thousand bucks. Well, yeah, and then you one just of play my with favorite the things, proxies. One of my favorite things was like when, when pros would play with their GP Day 2 draft decks on sleeve. Like, that was nice. That was an aesthetic choice that like I was really a big fan of. Yeah, like, There was exactly. something cool about just like Paul Rietzel, like just bridging his cards... Yeah, and like those guys, they, I mean, they definitely they made it a part of their... They didn't allow sleeves in tournaments until like 98, maybe. So before yeah. that, like even w official Wizards events, people with like, were just bridge shuffling cards with like, <laughs> the On cards ESPN. from different expansion sets had different colored backs slightly. Like back in the day, people were like, you could tell where somebody's strip mines were because all the cards from Antiquities had like a different coloration on the back slightly that you could tell so shit like that's always been an issue yeah when you condition cards by looking at the back of them you can tell when you go through old school cards there's there's a noticeable difference of just the the texture and the feel and all that a little less you know just smell bad <laughs> which is so funny because like carta monday made all the cards and every expansion set look different and now 45 different printers on every continent are doing it and the backs all look pretty uniform that's just computers i think that's pretty rad I, uh, the other day I was going through our warehouse and we found a, a box of old stuff that's like not magic, not Pokemon. And I open it up and inside there is half the box is the old Star Trek card game. Yes. <laughs> and the other half is Netrunner cards. And I pull them out and I just like, it totally spaced my mind that like those, those are Deckmaster cards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they Vampire are. The Exter Vampire the Eternal Struggle and Net uh, yep. Netrunner were Deckmaster. Yeah. And just like, that's the, the fact that. Like, those cards are more uniform than Magic cards were. <laughs> yeah, and they had a lot of Magic's artists, too. Yeah. Hmm. This is my favorite Mark Poole <laughs> Vampire the Eternal Struggle card with a vampire getting hit with a trash can lid. That's my favorite. One of the most asked-for Pokemon cards in our store is the Chris Rush Mewtwo. What Chris yeah. Rush did one yeah. Pokemon card, and it was a promo Mewtwo. Mm-hmm. Um, His name is Chris Tucker. Time. He was in Rush Hour. Oh, I have this Mewtwo. This one was like one of my favorites. Yeah. One of my friends used to use good. the foil version of it signed as his germ token for, for Batter Skull. Nice. Ooh. Uh, he sold it a couple years back for like $2,500 or something completely ludicrous. Because like I imagine Chris Rush did not sign a lot of those. No, no. I imagine not. I, I didn't even... Yeah. I wonder what the weirdest thing anybody's ever been asked. Because I, I played against a dude at a tournament, and he's like, I got all my Lin Civvies signed by China. And I was like, cool, though. China was just like, I don't know what this is, but I'll sign it. I know somebody who has a Tim Allen signed mountain. Tim Allen? Yeah. The guy, the cocaine smuggler from Home Improvement? <laughs> <laughs> the cocaine smuggler? No, I mean the actor. You mean the the New York financier? Well, listen, his his mugshot says uh, Kalamazoo Police Department, so the Kalamazoo yeah. comedy scene used that as our T-shirt image. Cast, but was no, someone it just you? like walked. Oh, good. Was it you whose friend had a, a Vanna White Wheel of Fortune? No, I saw somebody talking about that though, and that's really cool. Yeah, I do like that. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, because it didn't have Pat Sajak on it. Because that guy sucks. <laughs> you know what doesn't suck, Jason? Vanna White. All the mean Probably. secret. All the mean secret layers. 
The I meme. I like the goblin meme. gram. Like, how do you feel? Yeah, like, how do you feel about your I, Instagram goblins? I wish you know? they looked a little bit more like magic cards. Just nope, a, wrong. a smidgen. Eh. Just I'm as, as, long, I'm as, long as, as long as my sorter can and the TCG player app can recognize them, I don't care. That is, that's not even just like a joke line. That is a yeah. that is a line that I have as like if an if an average player can hold their phone over this and beep it and see what it is and what it looks like. That that's the line. So here's my line to determine if I think a secret layer is good or not. I ask myself, what was the pitch for this like? Does the pitch for it sound good? It, like the question for like you know the one where it's like the the SpongeBob meme lettering. Yes. Yeah. Comic Sans. Yeah. The, the pitch is like, Comic Sans what if we did trolley cards Sans. with trolley text? Like, that doesn't sound interesting. But if the question is, what if goblins used Instagram? I would pay for tickets to that show. What if right? Run used Instagram and, like, right. trolled goblins? That's very That's good. a good concept. Yeah. yeah. Run is all of us. I, <laughs> look, all of us. and the no, more upset listen, they make people, the better they are. Some people the one goblin who's doing, like, the duck face. The and I don't, make the goblin, I don't need that in my Twitter timeline. Chieftain? Twitter's bad enough, okay? We don't need open goblosexuality, okay? You either live as the goblin with the f face, or I realize this makes me sound Twitter. really right wing, but I, I'm sorry, I got to put my foot down. I'm turning forty this month. Like what? I, you can't want to f goblins. I'm sorry. Why did they make the goblin chieftain look like that? Why is he looking at me like he like? Knows like he, he can is get a lover it? who's just woken up next to me. He's like, for those uh, listening to the audio, pretend, pretend I'm doing like a Zoolander face. <laughs> That's you know how the you important do the Zoolander questions. face? You smile without moving your eyes at all, and then you raise your eyebrows all the way up, and then you stop smiling. That's your Zoolander face. I don't. What? I'm not gonna. Somebody at home's doing it, but it's not gonna be me. What I'm gonna do? Jason's instead, killing it. Yeah. What I'm yeah. gonna do instead is uh, talk about this breaking bulk that none of you are ever gonna get. Breaking bulk time. Breaking bulk time. Break. 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 Oh yeah, breaking bulk. There's so much good stuff. It's a pick. Breaking bulk. The end. Oh, 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 oh boy go. you know what people have wanted to <laughs> over the last 20 minutes are like i can't wait till they do a magic card segment this True. podcast Some is so boring are. talk about which cards worth 15 cents fine we will this card is worth a dollar and so is every card in its cycle it's a colorless uh common from Kaldheim. So it's a land. Is it the dual land? The the not the dual lands. The the come into play top lands. The, the those snow lands. I think those are inside. all like fifty cents on a buy list. I think the most expensive one is blue green followed by green black. Followed well, I'm talking by. about like Latarja Lake and stuff. Yeah, it's oh none of the ones that have the abilities. Latarja Lake of, is the only one I play. It's none of those. That's lit. There's a an equipment cycle in that set, right? You you're right. It's a land. Uh, yeah, I'm it's guessing the snow, like the snow guild gates. Is it no. the shimmering grotto or whatever the equivalent that is? Is nope. it some no. stupid land that only comes in an intro deck and therefore the supplies artificially low? No. Yep. Oh, uh, <laughs> is the blue green one and like the red white one or something? Uh, it's actually y'all ready for this? It's actually just the half art basic lands from Cold Time. They're all a dollar. You got me. I I got that one. That counts. Yeah. Event, I, count. I, I guess eventually we we narrowed it down, but yeah. Um I'll be honest, I actually don't know where you get half art lands from Kaldheim, but this was a thing if you remember back to Bundles. Oh, through the Gatewatch for, for a dollar on BFC. Yeah, you use bundles, you'd get the half art ones of wastes or whatever and those carried a premium just hmm. because they were they, there were fewer of them. And in Kaldheim there's this um, snow covered lands. So as a result, um there's all the the regular basic lands are um, about the same price as the um, the snow ones. So um, just a just a real just a googly weird little googly. fun fact. Yeah. So these are not the... snow. You're saying you're you're saying these are regular, not snow basics. Is that what you're saying, or are they the snow half basics? No, they're regular basics. None. Okay. Snow. Yeah. yeah. So and they're just high dash forest. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Not so yeah, I've definitely bulked these out this week yeah specifically like the swamp Where and the, the forest are a dollar yeah 
Well, sorry, That's buddy. crazy. Yeah, didn't well, they look it. cool. <laughs> they like My they brain? have like the kind of shimmery, like the, like there's snow on the uh, the mana symbol. Yeah, like the island one is really cool. It's got like a northern lights sort of thing going on in the art. But I mean, uh, the thing about basic lands is that there are basic lands in Magic, even normal ones like this, that are worth more than bulk, a lot more than bulk. But knowing what they are is kind of a challenge sometimes. So there you go. Word. Mine's not particularly hard to guess, I don't think, uh, but it's worth a shocking amount of money given the factors surrounding it. It is a Gaze Lost Cradle. Caverns of Ixalan. Lost Caverns of Ixalan, green uncommon. Spelunking? Yeah, it's Spelunking. Do you know how much it costs right now to get a playset of Spelunking shipped to you from TCG Player? $20. Yes. 15 Do you know how much it costs to get a girl who does Spelunking and doesn't tell everybody? It's like sixteen to seventeen dollars for a playset of Splunky, and if you buy them all individually from separate sellers, it's yeah. even more. Yeah, it's a, somehow it, it's a sweet, sweet card. That's for sure. It sees plays in standard. It sees play in modern. It sees playing commander. Probably you see play. It's playing pioneer. Yeah. Plus, it's, it's pioneer just got a, it's got a that makes sense cool, too. Yeah, it's got a cool sounding name. Splunk. You can play Mystic Sanctuary with no other islands in play and a Splunking in play to get the trigger. And you, there's a loop involving like Beseech the Mirror, Splendid Reclamation, the Black Cave, Scape Shift, the Black Green Desert, and Mystic Sanctuary. What and kind of Rube just, like, Goldberg nonsense is this? You don't. So you, Pillage like, the Bog finds all the pieces for it. You just like you play a Beseech the Mirror and you win the game if you have Spelunking in play and a Mystic Sanctuary in play. Oh, uh, it's. It's a. Uh, I don't know if it's like great, but it's it's been seeing play. I'm curious what the combo. I play that in Commander. <laughs> I have Spelunking and I have uh, Mystic yeah, Sanctuary I just play trick in my arch. And it's like I have another Amulet of Vigor, so now all my Triomes are very good. I'm sure well, I and uh, yeah, I, I play it in Archelos too, and it makes the Mystic yeah. Sanctuary really good because any way of making Mystic Sanctuary come to play on tap will give you the trigger for it. Yeah. So it's Jund Scape Shift is what the deck is. I can link it here in the... Uh... Heck yeah, that sounds like a sweet one. We're talking about bringing back the brewery part of Brainstorm Brewery. Here you go, everybody. JJ will put this uh, in the show notes so you can go check it out uh, if you're interested yeah. in that sort of thing. One Scape Shift, one Splendid Reclamation, four Beseech the Mirror. That's that's how we do it. <laughs> Splendid Reclamation is one of my favorite cards ever. I'm in favor of so anything sweet. that lets me do both with the better Scape Shift. Yeah, well, Aftermath Analyst is basically making that a viable standard strategy. Aftermath Analyst is EDH playable. It's crazy. Like, I'm putting that in decks. It's like $3, $4, too. Yeah, it's It's, very expensive. bonkers. One of those cards that definitely would have been a rare if it was printed four years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know what is under a dollar still, but is getting a lot of attention, and it could be the next card to just kind of pop because no one was using it at all before? A card that is a blue common from Mercadian Masks. I will tell you this much. It is in play because it does not have to be played for its mana cost. Is it foil? Thwart? Of course not. That was from uh, Fork. Prophecy. Prophecy. Thwart. Thwart, yeah. Thwart. Thwart. Oh, the Thwart's common. No, Thwart's uncommon. You're dumb. Oh, you're right. It is. Is it all gush? Is it gush? It's not. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh, gush isn't bulk, guys. When it hit like eleven dollars, there a couple are people years listening ago. to this podcast who were not alive when gush was bo- was. Created. Not everyone knows about the eighty-seven page gush memoir. Okay. It was a popper card. The professor made it worth money. Oh it's not. Li- all right, fine. I'm. I'm, I'm, look, I'm, I, I'm I sorry. I thought masks, more people would know this. about the professor than us. I'm sorry. I thought uh, that. It's kind of a boring pick, you guys. Mercadian Masks, Blue Common. Is it Diplomatic Immunity? No. It's, so that was going to be my guess. Then Diplomatic he said you don't Immunity have to... has a mana. You have yeah. to pay it for its mana cost. Oh, yeah, you're right. I'm stupid. That was going to be my guess. No, you're not. I'm not your dad. I keep saying that. Don't let me make you feel dumb. I'm not really your dad. Uh. Title Boar. You guys are never going to get this. Uh, title Boar, you... I return an island. It costs right. two. You can return an island, play it for free. You tap or untap a creature. This is a Stella Lee wild card. Uh, you can, for zero mana, untap a creature that, like, copies spells. Like, if people are playing, they're going to pay ten bucks for a Cerulean Wisp to put in the stupid Stella Lee wild card deck. 
you definitely want tidal bore and they are cheap but they are starting to move because i will accept this as a pick of the week what putting a question marking emoji in the the breaking bulk aspect but it's 50 cents where, where card kingdom where every card is 50 cents minimum yeah it's 31 cents on tcg player do you want me My to go Roka buy a bunch on tcg cents. player you want me to buy them all there are only 218 listings dj i'll spend 200 dollars to shut you the f up is that what you want what's that there's a brick yeah. of 20 copies for 22 cents a piece i'm just saying Oh, the LP ones with a buck twenty-two yeah. shipping. Okay. Yeah. Get so they're a buck forty-four. Uh, and you know, foils are almost twenty dollars. Yeah, the that's... foil spiking is a good canary in the coal mine for sure. Yeah. It's but not like, yet. A, also, it's it's, it's, it's a CDH card. I, I I don't know. Just just pull my just don't don't bulk these out like I, I'm pretty sure I did this week. The, I the made foil a lot of instant collections. The foil is a dollar eighty on Card Kingdom buy list. The non foil is not on there. So just for reference, you might that'll set them change. Aside. I'm gonna buy them all out on Card Kingdom right now <laughs> and tell them, "Hey, put this on your buy list. I need more." And by the time the episode comes out, you're gonna look crazy. <laughs> Love it. All right, DJ, what are you looking at? I have two, which cool. is very in character for me. Mm. Uh, the first one is a regular one, and the second one is absolutely insane. So first off, we have our. Our amuse bouche, if you will, the the scourge, 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 blue uncommon with no reprints. Blue uncommon? Is it blue parallel uncommon plans? from scourge with no reprints? What'd you say? Parallel plans? No. But long term plans, maybe. Nope. Hatching plans. No. no the, no, plan, the there are no plans or machinations in this card. Is it a creature? No. There were like three blue. It is not, not brain freeze. There were like three blue uncommon cards in that set. I'm not. It's not brain freeze. I'm not. I'm not pe being that guy. Although, uh, so it's worth, it's worth, worth noting, brain freeze is like twenty dollars right now. Direct temporal Fisher is crazy. Not temporal Fisher, Corbin. Temporal Fisher was common. common. It was banned in Popper. True. So I knew about it. Then why did you suggest it? It's it's not not long term. What's the other one? It's Hatching it's plans. a it's a dude looking at a plans like from Guild Pact. It's yeah, the three mana one, one that like look at the tops. They put a card seventh down or something. Yeah, that's long term nope. plans. It is not long term plans. Short term plans. Medium term Colder. plans. Mm. Colder for a great low rate you can get online. Go to the general and save some time. Okay, uh, DJ is it? Does it draw cards? No, that was common. It does that not draw cards. Rush of knowledge. I think. Is it we obviously don't know what it cheese? is. No, misformal. It's not a creature. This form Ultimus was rare. I'm calling it here. Fine. Metamorphos. Not Manamorphos. Metamorphos. Metamorphos like was from Scourge? I think this is a Dan Dan card. Uh, yeah. It is one yeah. in a blue instant. That's not target from Scourge. Permanent that opponent was from Torment. On top of its owner's library, that opponent may put an artifact, creature, enchantment, or land from his or her hand into play. Very Dan Dan esque. Uh, it would make sense that this is why this card has. Oh, this Dan is Dan popping But yeah, it is, is also three bucks been... on TCG Player right now. That that's. I was also gonna say. So the professor made a Dan Dan video recently that caused a lot of cards to spike. Caused Dan Dan spike. Sure, this has been like a multi dollar card for a a hot minute. Yeah. This yeah. has been an expensive card for a while. It, again, it has no reprints. So Scourge's Scourge is the only. Scourge set that this is from. Uh, I don't know if this is also like a weird CEDH tech thing. I could not tell you, but... The foil peaked in January, so like something else happened with this card. I think it's just Dan Dan. There's a lot of yeah. Dan Dan, and Dan Dan's Rashmi been on and them. Ragavan came out around that time period. I think that was the Ristic Studies Dan Dan video. Yeah, yeah there's been... The there's, Studies, yeah. yeah, there's been... Um, and then this past week, there was a Game Nights Dan Dan video as well, because it moved yeah, yeah, this has, like, again. zero to do with EDH. This is wild. Uh, just pick your metamorphoses, not your manamorphoses. Those are actually Those two, bulk though. now. Oh, metamorphoses wait, really? are pretty much bulk, corporate. It's Ouch. a wild world. Metamorphose about to be on the come up. <laughs> it makes I me so sad going Listen, through cards. Listen, I bet on metamorphos big back in the day because I misheard somebody, and now I'm, it's finally paying off. <laughs> there you go. Or you That's saying, I, I believe in metamorphos in Modern Horizons 3. It's the kind of card that, like, 
the more broken cards get added to modern, the better it gets. True. The cards have like, yeah. never been reasonable, right? Give us too much Ralph, good shit uh, for them to grief away all of it. Is it Rao? The, the, the Rao the Flip Planeswalker probably yeah. goes great with it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a cool card. That's one of those that is very sad that if it's nearly bulk. I've gone through a ton of cards recently that are like, this used to be a 3 or $4 uncommon. Surely it's worth at least a dollar now. Like the but it's Yova. not, and don't call me Shirley. Yeah, Tatyova was the one. That I was like, <laughs> this used to be, like, I remember selling these a couple years ago. They were $3 on the Card Kingdom buy list. Mm-hmm. Remember and the now, foils? Yeah, now it's like a 75 cent card or whatever. I can't even, like, it's just genuinely don't want to think about how much too many money. Right. Well, yeah. This next it's, one is going to blow your minds. Or your minds. Uh, we'll censor that for the for the sensitive ears. This so the the original printing of this card is not worth anything. There are two printings: Oath of the Gatewatch and the List. Uh, Oath of the Gatewatch version is like actual true bulk, eighteen to nineteen cents. The List version is ten dollars. What is and the rarity? Is, yeah, common. What color? Technically blue. From Oath of the it's, Gatewatch. I I know this one. Um. Eldrazi Sky Spawner or something? Nope. That card's cool. It's, it's slip through space. The slip through space. I'm not gonna make y'all guess it a million times because I said technically blue. Uh, slip through space is an Oath of the Gatewatch common that it's also happens to work well with this uh, stormy comboy. Is it commander because it's one blue? It just cantrips and targets your creature. Uh, the again, the Oath of the Gatewatch version is twenty cents. The list version is almost ten dollars, and not like oops, one sold for ten dollars and skewed the data. No, you can scroll one on TCG just player. Just sold for nine forty five today. But you can keep scrolling. There, there's there's a lot of sales on this going back to March for like eight dollars. Is this a direct thing? This it is a direct be. thing, but I don't know why. That is I. Like I believe there are this only card was... sixteen listings, and the cheapest one is three bucks right now. This so is I... just a this is a list thing for sure. But right, but th- so this was only from the coin flip precon. This card oh. only came out of the coin flip precon, so that is the supply issue. But normally, when we talk about cards that have this massive direct premium, there's an mm-hmm. explanation for that, and that is oh, the auto cart on mock or the cart. Thing on Moxfield or Architect that is just filling these copies when you're getting a customer to just click buy this deck. I don't know why that wouldn't just default to Oath of the Gatewatch. Why are why are the Oath of the Gatewatch copies not fifty cents a dollar? Like wh- why is why is one just true bulk and what is ten dollars? There is no in between on this. Well, I guess it has low supply. It's a yeah. coin flip deck, but the, there's something missing here from the equation that my brain How many cards comment. do you have to be buying where it's not worth looking at a hundred different listings to make sure your eight dollar common doesn't have a thirty cent other version of it? Like, I, who who does that? Who just clicks um, card optimizer and then says we're done here? Do. Oh, it a went up by thirteen dollars when I click cart cop optimizer. Well, that's the way it goes. I'll probably save that much in shipping. I, 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 okay, yeah, a lot of people. I, obviously. <laughs> obviously, are, this wouldn't be happening. I people. get it. One of the things I always try to remember when we're talking about this stuff is that the four of us, by being here talking about magic finance at all, are on the top half of people who are the most savvy about finance and magic, like, just mm-hmm. intrinsically. For sure. Most people don't even think about it at all. Most people just, like, they get their paycheck from their big government job where they teach drones how to redacted, <laughs> and they log on to and they type in, like, ooh, fun commander cards! Oh, I know, because those people are all, all, all those people are EDH content creators, and they're like, wow, I had no idea this card was expensive. Well, and then the they spike it. Price, and, and, and then they spike ago, the card. Like, and then they spike the card, and they, they go, the oh, look what I did. It's about all these finance bros spike magic cards. All right, Sorry, so, that's a little bit of old salt coming out. That, a little bit. If you have a takeaway from this, if you bought the coin flip deck, and you were one of the people who waited in the who trenches actually got it. for it to arrive... Uh, the slip through space is one of the most expensive cards in that deck, and by far. <laughs> and who's to say why? Anybody's game, really. If you list it for nine dollars, it will probably sell. If you list it for one dollar, it will not sell because people are going to wonder what's wrong with it. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, let's give a shout out. By the way. To our sponsor, MTG Stocks, we spent all this time looking at graphs, looking at numbers, Ooh. and we're pulling all of them 
from mtgstocks.com, which is, of course, 100% the best website on the internet to get your magic finance information and especially historical data. It has data for cards going back at least 10 years if they've been out that long and for other newer cards every day that they've existed. So you check out the premium site as well of MTG Stocks where you can have access to an even greater suite of tools. We all love MTG Stocks, use it daily, and it is a key resource for this podcast. All right, next up, let's talk about Modern Horizons 3 just a little bit. The leaks have been flowing again. Wizards has done some official previews to offset it. Uh, It seems like kind of a show all around and that eventually, I don't even know when the set comes out, we'll have Modern Horizons 3 dropped on us. Uh, But but there's a lot going on here. I mean, what, uh, Cass, I know you want to talk a little bit about this. What um, from Modern Horizons, I guess, has your eye that we've seen thus far? Most of the cards that have really spoken to me are the Eldrazi cards. Um, There are a few other things, like a few of the the reprints that are going to be new to Modern but not new to Magic are good. But the card that I think people saw and had polarizing reactions on was officially spoiled today which is devourer of destiny i believe is what it's called a yeah devourer the big old drazi. Destiny. Um, for those not in the know it is a seven mana uh diamond diamond and five creature eldrazi it's a six six and it has the text of you may reveal this card from your opening hand if you do at the beginning of your first upkeep look at the top four cards of your library you may put one of those cards back on top and exile the rest this card both is a 7-drop for Ugin's Labyrinth and digs you towards Ugin's Labyrinth. And also, when you cast it eventually, uh, you exile a permanent that's one or more colors. This card is closer to Once Upon a Time than people are going to give it credit for. It's mm. not Once Upon a Time, to be clear. Yeah. But the fact that it also just is a 7-mana card that helps you find your soul land is huge. Yeah. No, I agree with all parts of that. I mean, the Eldrazi deck, um, as they're trying to build it with these new cards is um very interesting and like, I, have, remember, I have a question for the teacher this, well sure this is go ahead DJ. Corbin you're not the teacher uh, yes yes DJ uh, the, the short one in the back uh can I do serum powder shenanigans with this that is my pick of the week actually so <laughs> uh, you you super can play do serum powder shenanigans my other pick of the week is eternal scourge so like you know, here we are so this... scourge Yes, those are the two that everyone is like the 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 space they're playing into with the Eldrazi in this set, in terms of the revealing and the exile zone and the space specifically, as making some of those decks very very interesting because the Serum Powder um, cast from Exile cards has already at times in modern been sort of a uh, an addition to the Eldrazi type decks, and this feels like it's going to open up sort of a whole lot of space in that vein, which I think is really neat. Definitely. And remember this card that... Is... Sorry, go ahead. This card is also a 7-drop that you're not embarrassed to have on layaway with Ugin's Labyrinth if the game goes long. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And what I was going to say is, remember, like this is Modern Horizons 3, so this isn't necessarily like, oh, we put Eldrazi in a standard set, and if they work in Modern, great. This is like, remember, they designed these cards with the intent right. of them being Modern power level playable. Um which kind of just gives a lot more credence to the to the brews sort of floating around with all the serum powers and, and internal scourges and the like. I I guarantee you, someone internally in play design had an Eldrazi deck that was too good for like one day. A couple <laughs> of cards got nerfed, and then things were fine. It's like, very possible, yeah, because the they, Soul Land is is great. Right. They they tested these cards against Murktide and like you know Leyline Scion. Like they 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 tested against the actual environment they were in, plus the new cards or whatever. Like, the Eldrazi deck is going to be playable. If it's going to be incredible, who's to say? But, like, clearly they want this to be a deck. It'll be fun. Yeah. Reality Smasher back in the format. Let's go. Eldrazi Summer, yeah. yeah. It could be. Good, very well. Hot Drazi Summer. (laughs) Uh, All right. Well, before we get out of here this week, we, of course, as always, want to leave you with our Picks of the Week, and that is where we are headed to next. Pick of the week, pick of the week, pick of the week. Time for the pick of the week. So Cass, I think got it started. You want to talk a little more specifically, I guess, about Serum Powder yeah. and Eternal and just kind of what, what your thoughts are on that? So for me, the card Serum Powder is good in two kinds of strategies. It's ones where the divide between your best card and your worst card is huge. And strategies where... 
Uh, for example, that, that first category would be something like Vintage Dredge, where Bazaar of Baghdad is so much better than every other card in your right. deck that it doesn't matter how many cards you have to exile to get there. Um, the other category is ones where you need A plus B early, and you're just trying to get more looks at that. Um, and I think that Serum Powder also being a mana rock that you can play, that can maybe get around something like a Blood Moon to give you a Diamond in play, because it taps yeah. for Colorless proper. Right. Um, while also being a thing that sort of works with Eternal Scourge with uh, this Devourer of Destiny to get free 3-3s three that, you know, you can recur. Um, that, that to me is very compelling. Uh, Serum Powder also only has two printings. It's Dark Steel and Iconic Masters. Yeah, that is the big hit for me. Iconic Masters yeah. is almost 10 years old at this point. Oof. Holy cow. Jesus. What? No, Iconic Masters just came out. Do you mean Graveyard Masters? Iconic Masters was actually the uh, the first set that I opened packs with with my ex-wife. So like that's that's where we're at in the timeline. <laughs> my ex-wife. My ex-wife. All right, Jason, what are you looking at for pick of the week? I actually I actually do have a legitimately car- uh, uh, a card that I got just by like it overperforming when I played with it. I think I think people are kind of treating Annie joins up like it's a two dollar card. Which is fine, but if you've played Annie Joins Up, it plays better than a lot of the $5 cards in the set. And uh, also, it triggers when a legendary creature does a thing that every commander does that. So Annie Joins Up basically just doubles your commander triggers, plus it like kills a creature when you play it. Um, I, I Under $2, Annie Joins Up is just dumb. And if you it put also, it in a deck, you're like, uh, this is kind of nuts because it's not just your commander. It's all your legendary creatures. And every creature in a magic deck is legendary now. And it fits really There's well also- into Naya type decks that don't necessarily always have a lot of powerful enchantment- enchantments. Yeah. It also has almost a zero buy list spread between low and CK buy list, which is always a go. good sign. Yeah. 100%. Also, it's popular in Vojo, which is like the number one deck right now. <laughs> number one hated deck. Yuma Proud oh. Protector is... Uh, <laughs> Patslanza, Pet, Sun Favored, which wasn't even, like, from that block, but it was, you know, from a couple of sets ago. Mm-hmm. You know, you remember six weeks ago when they released the Wild Caverns of Ixalan? Uh, Petslanza Sun Favored um, is the number one deck using Annie Joins Up. And, you know, people who made a TCG player order who, when that card was spoiled, still haven't gotten their entire deck yet. So there's still time for Petslanza to move the the price of Annie joins up but with it being in like a ton of really popular stuff right now including Voja which is like the number one boogeyman on EDH uh, I think that it under two dollars is too cheap for this enchantment that says double your commander triggers but also all your other legendary creatures too I don't know man yeah and we're just a few weeks away I think I guess I don't have the release date in front of me but we're a few weeks away from OTJ sort of being old news and being fully into, you know, Modern Horizons 3 and whatever else is coming out around this, this summer. We're 23 days, or sorry, yeah, 25 days from Modern Horizons 3 release as the time of recording. Yeah, there you go. So perfect. About three weeks from when you're listening to this, it'll be out. So kind of last call here on OTJ stuff. Sure. I am going with a very affordable card this week. Storm Kiln Artist fits in very nicely with all these Cerulean Wisps and Crimson Wisps and blue red spellcastery things that are going on. Uh, just a four mana 2 2 that lets you just play with your. play with yourself for the next 10 minutes. Uh, it's down to 50 cents. It was up to $3 for a very long time. Just has, has always been in that $2.99 direct premium sweet spot. It was in Commander OTJ, which is the most recent Commander set attached to a set, and uh, it's down to 50 cents or so. If you can find a brick of these for 50 cents and scroll them away uh, until the hype dies down, if you can dodge the next reprint, then I this is just going to be another $2.99 direct premium for you. Yep. Dodging the reprint, always the challenge. I made Eshrid's Invocation my pick of the week less than a month ago. It immediately got hit by a reprint. <laughs> so that's cool. Yeah, yeah, I got God, I guess. Um, but I am going to try again this week with Pillage the Bog, OTJ. What is Rares. Astrid's Invocation in? It's Do in I? MH3. You got, it has a leak. Uh, okay. It's an uncommon in MH3. Uncommon! Woo! Yeah, yeah just Put the full blowouts, the you dirt. know? The uh, full blowouts. Spike, didn't it? 
was a ten dollar card pillage the bog is about four dollars right now so it climbed up from bulk rare status like it was a dollar it's since settled at four over the past month or so i actually think that pillage the bog is just going to be one of the big winners from otj and will live more in the five to ten dollar range than the like three to four dollar range so this is kind of you know i said last call on otj i think pillage the bog is something that people are only going to find more ways to abuse um it is a standard legal tutor and will continue to be for a long time and then other formats as well i think it's probably your last chance to get them under five dollars right now plus you I can like plot it whenever you want yeah it's good do what uh, i see like three tweets a day from pro players being like wow i didn't realize this card was just this good like <laughs> yeah like, the card has weird... got so much rate on it I have a weird me complaint about this card. It's not even a me complaint. It's a logistics complaint, and it's a valid complaint, and Wizards should feel deep shame about it. Um, <laughs> so pre-release promos now have a year in the bottom left corner. We have gone from putting the full date in the bottom right corner of the art since Cons of Tarkir, where you had the... Those ones are much cooler, which is a different diatribe because right. it's somebody's birthday, and that can have emotional resonance with it. Whatever. Now we have just the the year in the bottom left corner. This card has the gold stamp in the bottom left directly over this like golden g green ooze, which makes it impossible to see. So you will have so many more error rates of if you buy a foil of this, you'll probably get a pre-release promo or vice versa, just because the date on this card is impossible to see, just visually. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> I have. I also have a visual gripe with this card. Every time I see it, I think it has flashback, not plot. And I'm like, wow, this card's busted. And it's still good, <laughs> but it looks like it has flashback just based on the formatting of the card. It yeah, kind of does, yeah. and the 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 art even sort of lends itself to like a yeah. before and after death kind of vibe, you know. And yep. it's a Grogari card, so you might ex you expect it to have a graveyard yep. ability. Exactly. Yeah. It's um. I'll say this is. It, I thought it was a Seb McKinnon art when I first saw it. It looked, it had the vibe, and uh, but it is not, obviously. No, he's all about draining the Swamp Corp and not pillaging it. <laughs> good point, good point, good point. I want to, as a reminder, ask you to check out mtgstocks.com as well as Coalesce Apparel and Design. You can use the gift code Brainstorm Brewery to get 10% off your order over there at that website for any merch from any of your favorite Magic content creators. So we definitely highly recommend you go check out Coalesce, use the gift code Brainstorm Brewery. Well, I think that just about does it for us this week. So on behalf of everyone here on the podcast, we want to thank all of you for listening, all of our patrons who make this cast possible by going to patreon.com slash BSB and for taking a little bit of time out of your day to listen to us. Appreciate it, everyone. This is Brainstorm Brewery. We'll see you next week. If you're Bye. listening to this podcast, you should not be taking time out of your day to do it. It should be zero effort. You should be doing this while doing something else, like driving or having sex. Or having sex while driving.